Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. It's a, a great honor to be able to attend this conference, and um, the last day or so has been really inspiring for me and, you know, given me such inspiration for my own research and where things can be going, and uh, I'm happy to be at the forefront and to be sharing this forum with you guys. Uh, my particular background is I, I, I hail from England, and I was... Uh, brought in in 2007 to work for Clemson University as an archaeologist, uh, helping with the reconstruction of the Civil War submarine, the HL Hunley. Uh, the Hunley being the first submarine ever to sink a ship in battle. Uh, it sank in 1864 and was lost for 136 years. And after its loss, uh, it was discovered in 1995, recovered in the year 2000, uh, and then it's been in our lab in Charleston, South Carolina for the last 13 to 14 years. And uh, we've been lucky with that because a lot of archaeological projects are, you know, it's pretty rip and run. You, when you discover an archaeological site, you've got to excavate, you've got to get in, you've got to get out. Uh, we've been privileged, especially for a maritime archaeological site, to be able to take our time with this project. And uh, we've established probably the most complete forensic uh, three-dimensional documentation uh, of any archaeological site to date. And um, as, you might, as you might hear, you've heard earlier uh, today, this was actually born digital. From, from the first excavation of the first bone, we took coordinates of everything that was taken and, and every single artifact that we have got inside the submarine has been uh, 3D scanned. So I'll introduce you also to some of my other projects that I've been working on. Uh, we kind of focus on not just archaeological documentation, but at the Warren Lash Conservation Center, we focus on exactly how we can uh, stabilize archaeological remains. We also do architectural documentation and uh, finite element analysis of large, uh, large historic buildings. Uh, and then we've, I, I just got back from Greece where we were scanning some uh, uh, Mycenaean uh, tablets. Uh, and th again, that's a great uh, avenue for uh, curatorial dissemination uh, and trying to share with uh, some, an online viewer similar to uh, uh, what Autodesk and the Smithsonian are offering. So uh, very exciting stuff. Okay, so yeah, these are the areas I'll be working in. Uh, and just give you a, a quick update. The uh, Hunley submarine is going to be my first area of uh, speaking, Fort Sumter National Monument. It's, that's where the first shots of the Civil War were uh, fired, just, just next door to where the Hunley was actually recovered. Uh, then I'll be looking at some defamation analysis that I did on um, some corks which were found on the Red Bay shipwrecks, which were found uh, uh, in Canada, uh, shipwrecks from uh, 1565, and we managed to stabilize those artifacts and then document the shape change of the artifacts using defamation analysis. Uh, with geomagic, uh, and then to the li Linear B tablets visualization. So what do we do in this lab? Well, we, really, we're not just looking to try and create uh, something for the end user, that being the, uh, the student or the, uh, the museum participant. What we're trying to look at is the intrinsic nature of ma the material of the actual artifact as it's been used. Um, and to that end, what we're aiming to do is to, to challenge beyond surface scanning, but also to look at how a subject is going to change. So for reconstruction, uh, an artifact is, is brought out of the dirt or the mud or whatever, and it's usually in a pretty bad state of repair. Well, we try not document that artifact immediately as it comes out, and then through its uh, timeline up to conservation and final preparation for, dis for showing, we'll keep scanning it and try and present a archaeological record and try and come up with some sort of model, a holistic framework, so that we can understand how stable that object is. Um, next is through the con conservation and then obviously to the digital end where we want to be able to share this data with our colleagues and, and try and get some of our 3D data to people who might not be using three-dimensional data as yet. That could be sediment geologists, uh, pathologists, our partners in our archaeological research project. We want to be able to share our data with those guys to enhance their research. Well, the idea and our main fundament here is really to 
incorporate three-dimensional scanning practices throughout the archaeological uh, timeline. That is to fully 100% document these objects. And now, I don't know how, if we've got many conservat conservators in the room, but um, when you, you're a plucky archaeologist asking to scan you know, a, a historic document three or four times, then you know, the conservator can be pretty perplexed at why you need to be handling that object. Well, when we can show through deformation analysis that that object is starting to slough or bend or deform in any way and contextualize that using mathematics and engineering principles, then we can show that this, ad, uh, that this object needs surgery. It needs to be repaired. Uh, whereas before, slight nuances and changes were not apparent and being shown to the conservators to be able to stabilize an object. Uh, and through that, we'll be looking at best practices. Um, one of our major areas is to actually share this work that we're doing and be able to uh, record objects in the same way, si similar to E57, but also we want to approach how people uh, touch objects and, uh, and evaluate them. So do, if you're scanning a, a skull, how do you put that onto a, uh, onto a turntable? How do you handle these objects? And what are the limit limitations and, uh, and areas that you've got to watch out for to stabilize that? Well, first, why does an archaeologist want to be able to understand uh, in 3D? Primarily, back pre probably before 3D began, you know, up to the eight, late 80s, we were content with using historical documents, with using photographs, with using illustration data of archaeological sites. Well, illustration data such as this, this was a drawing of our submarine, it really, that's meant to inform us. Well, what if the artist missed a bit or he interpreted it a bit differently? And we were trying to advise our archaeological excavation and we, for instance, were told that the rudder was shaped like that and the rudder is absolutely different. Well, that could impinge upon our uh, excavation techniques and our archaeological analysis. So it's not always trustworthy to go with um, historic documentation. Similarly enough, when you're in the um, fit and furor of digging an archaeological site, it's very, very difficult for you to actually create archaeological illustrations. This is an overhead illustration of, you can't really tell what that is, can you? It's a, some blocks, it's a little bit scrawly. See, there's a bit, of, a bit of mud on there. Probably somebody was grumpy and not had a, enough coffee that day and, you know, hangover on sued and that was an, an important day of excavation. Well, that kind of media, it, it comes back, and five years later, I need to draw up that document to be able to understand why someone died. You know, it's, a, it's a very important. Well, we can't trust that all the time either, although it is still a, a major part of any archaeological resource. On the other end is photography. This is a photograph of the exact same area of the submarine, and if you have an, a photographer in there who's, who's trying to get his glamour shot, his nice angular shot, you know, it's not real, you can't go in with a ruler and be able to measure that photograph all the time, and it's always up to the idea of how the photographer decided to make the picture. So you've got a compendium of lots of different uh, user errors accumulating and accumulating, and, and 3D really does mitigate all that and allow you to look at the real object long after excavation and um, some of the archaeological remains have disappeared. This is a photo mosaic. Believe it or not, this, this surface is curved. This was some of our preambles before we got into 3D scanning. We thought, oh, we'll be able to put a, a tape measure along the side of the submarine and then kind of measure and match all of these photographs together. Um, I think color control was a bit of an issue in this picture. I don't know if you can see the edges in any of those pictures, no? Um, so uh, again, this is the submarine's 40 feet long, um, cylindrical and tapers at both ends. It's pretty challenging to be able to use uh, photo mosaic, a, a basically a flattened image to be able to do that. Uh, and, and as such, we decided that wasn't our, our course. Um, and then we went to document the exterior of the submarine using um, uh, structured light scanning. Well, this is where we get to today. Um, and we haven't got much texture mapping in here yet, but this is the uh, a, a physical reconstruction of the crew compartment. This is actually uh, where Captain Dixon would have been inside the submarine. Excuse me. 
uh, it's a very, very dynamic situation, and it gives us an area where we can actually create forensic reconstructions, and I can actually put in, you can see the red thing of the shoes, I can put his shoes back in that we managed to take points on before the excavation. Well, how did we do that? We used a system called IGPS, which has got a uh, triangulation. It's kind of like a, a pen that takes XYZ coordinates, and you put that pen on top of an artifact, and then you move, it, you move it around the artifact and you collect points during the excavation. So as your excavation sediment moves lower and lower and lower, you take more and more points, and then once it's been released from the sediment it's in, you remove it, but the points remain in spatial, in the coordinates remain. You take that, you take the bone into the lab, and then you 3D scan the bone, and then we can actually put it back into our 3D site plan. So here's another section of points that would have been taken around an archaeological area. Uh, and we had to do this with over 3,000 artifacts. So uh, again, we've been, had the luxury of taking our time with this and creating the most extensive forensic reconstruction of an archaeological, definitely a maritime archaeological site ever. And that's what you get to see. It's uh, bubble gums, or that's the things of nightmare in my dreams when I realize we've still got to work on it. Uh, that's actually the submarine. We're, we're actually looking forward of the submarine there. And you can see the rings, they're the frame rings that stuck on the submarine. So we've taken points on every single major object in the submarine. Well, we created models at first. As I said, we were born digital. Every single human remain, every single artifact had points taken on it. Well, first, we didn't have any scan data of, of the actual object, so we had to create models. We created models of these sections. And then we took our 3D scans at say uh, FEMA. And then we got uh, Doug Owsley, actually, a, a, fr a forensic pathologist who works with the Smithsonian, came down and gave us landmark points on these bones. And then we put our 3D scans back in to our site plan. And eventually, you had a whole lot more bubblegum points there. And then every single human remain has been assembled. And it, I can't emphasize why this is so important because our subject was full of sediment, so it took a very long time for us to be able to dig through and be able to establish coordinates. Uh, and, and, and we could never understand the site as it was found, because if we'd have just took all of the remains out, we would have never been able to develop a map. So 3D really was the only way we could go. Well, today we're using structured light scanning, and that's the Optotop HE. Um, structured light's a technique of triangulation, uh, projector, on one side, a camera on the other, uh, the projector uh, shines stripes, uh, and it's the way those stripes straight over a surface is triangulated, and a surface is created, a photograph is taken, and then you get a color effect. Now, we were a little silly, uh, and we went into the submarine and created a, uh, a very lengthy uh, scan of the entire submarine, uh, it took us 18 months with a $150,000 scanner walking in a foot of water wherever we went. And we managed to do it. Uh, but we controlled color. Uh, we had uh, a lot of challenges, but we managed to scan the entire submarine. And there you go. That's pretty high accuracy right there. And again, we need to record the shells and lots of other data in there. Well, we went into some other areas, and using that 3D documentation, we also create finite element models. This is of the submarine. The submarine was found heeled over to 45 degrees. So using our scan data, we created a complex geometry surface profile of the, all the joining sections. And then we went through and rotated the submarine back up to zero degrees um, without breaking it, which was quite lucky. So um, that was a big job. And then we use photogrammetry, and I, I know photogrammetry is a bit of a buzzword here today, but the way we use it also is as point measurement. So we can measure down to a micron accuracy by using prisms and targets, and all we look for are points. We just want to see where these points move. And when we rotated the submarine, we found out the submarine moved about two, mil two millimeters from uh, returning to its original shape as it was rotated. Well, in the future, we've got a lot of other work to be doing. Uh, we've got explosion simulations. We're working with the Navy um, to do um, hull survivability testing with uh, uh, Caterock, with the Navy's um, hull survivability group there. 
And as you can see here, we're using the 3D scanning and archaeological remains to create this reconstruction here um, to be able to test how the guys sank, how uh, extensive the blast was, and whether or not it could have killed the crew. Well, just quickly, we can go over some of the other projects. This is Fort Sumter. Um, this is a 3D scan we did of the entire fort, and then we created finite element models of the most broken sections of the fort. Um, we got this, the overall survey, we uh, traverse survey we did of the fort got down to about a millimeter's accuracy, which is pretty good. Uh, and then there's the deformation analysis of the uh, shipwreck San Juan uh, and these corks that we put through a process of subcritical drying. And then we monitor deformation, and you can see the, the heat spots of where uh, the subject changed, and really uh, that says plugging into the archaeological record and understanding what was going on. And then finally, um, my, la sorry, my latest project is working in uh, Athens, flying over to Athens and scanning these uh, uh, Mycenaean tablets where we've been able to record tablets that really cannot be touched by uh, human hands anymore because they're so fragile. Well, this language has not really been fully documented yet, so we need students to be able to share and document and come up with an interpretation of the language. So we've 3D scanned these, and now we're going to put them online for be able, people to be able to learn about in the future. And that's another one. So uh, in summation, basically, all we're here for is to be able to enhance repeatability, we want to be able to publish and share our, our results with you guys so that you guys can publish and share yours with us. We're into visualization and sharing it with the public. And again, we want to share and disseminate all of our research with you guys. Thank you.